Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 2, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called Last Call, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything Evil Dead leading up to and including this episode. The episode is rated TVMA, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah, um, the... The episode starts by underlining just how much Sam Raimi, I mean, Ash Williams loves that Delta, and <laughs> he's like, he's kissing a, a, a picture of it, just, he really loved that car. I mean, it didn't even have a CD player. And, let's see. Yeah, and we we go to the um, the the teenagers who stole the car and their friends, including the the daughter of the the sheriff and his wife, and which you know I can imagine that's going to come into play since by the end of this episode. The, the, you know, yeah, she's seen evidence of, of deadites, which, you know, her father, the sheriff, still thinks, oh, this is just ashy slashy again. And, let's see, yeah, um, two of them are in the backseat trying to get off. But, um, yeah, perv, the pervy pervert keeps perving on them. So they get him to leave, and the, let's see, um, yeah, it is very funny when they do one of these scenes where it's like, okay, they are on completely different, they're, they're not seeing things the same at all, you know, she's telling him, like, you know, let's, let's slow down a little, and he's sitting there rambling about, well, you know, I, th I just think we should be able to express the way we feel physically, and, you know, and it's just going on and on, and she finds this creepy book, opens it, and starts reading the incantations, like, wow, the two of you are not on the same page, like, literally, in, in, <laughs> and yeah, once she and not long after the car, you know, yeah, she she becomes possessed, and it seems like they're going to have sex with the car, and then she bites it, which you know there is um there's there's a number of like mythological across various cultures, you know, myths about you know women castrating men you know a lot of the time it's vagina dentata so yeah it's playing on that sort of primal fear which is you know this this franchise is quite good at playing on primal fears and let's see yeah um ruby is understandably upset with Ash, and he's like, you've been searching for this book 30 years, I can't fart without tripping over it, and I fart a lot. Wow. And then he goes, okay, so you have a plan. First things first, and then he farts. Wow. Very cool to see Ted Raimi. Again, never unhappy about seeing him. And let's see. Yeah, honestly, <clears throat> Hmm, the plan to party to you know with yeah throwing the party pretty decent like honestly it probably would have worked if not for the the you know possessed Arif um let's see her what, what Amber maybe I swear I mean no disrespect I'm just not great with with names of of characters I haven't spent a long time watching yet but. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, possessed amber, possessed car, if not for those things, yeah, they probably would have shown up to the party, and, yeah, let's see, and, yeah, uh, love the Christine tribute with the, the possessed car, and, you know, it's, running over people it is like 
I love the po there's parts where like there's fire behind the wheels. Like I guess like it's it's you know about it's it's gearing up to run sort of because it's like you know it's personified now and you know it like it's oh what's it called like it's like a, a bull getting ready to charge and blowing air out its nose in a, in aggression and such. Very very cool. And let's see. Yeah, at one point it it throws. I want to say those are called hubcaps, but I'm not a car person. I'm not a transformer. And the you know yeah goes right through the chest of this guy. Love that you could you could see like entrails and bones and just yeah. And you know it boomerangs back. Let's see. And yeah. So Brock and the others come into the car and uh, the bar, not the car. Wow. I swear I got enough sleep last night. And and yeah, the you know the yeah they argue we've been coming to this bar for forty years you know this is not and and you know typical Ash to not think about that eventuality you know of course Brock drinks it, he wouldn't be Ash's father if he didn't and yeah Ash you know is like okay Ruby first things first kill your dad. I was actually thinking that Father Time would take care of that one for us. No, I just mean distract him. I love that that's her first. Like, she doesn't even... She doesn't... Most people would build up to that. It's not the, the first, the thought, but that's, you know, that's Ruby. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and the thing, you know... The, and then we'll get the the car back. I mean the book back. Did I say car? I meant car. I mean, we'll get the car back. <laughs> he can't even get the words out, get the book back in, when it's the car that's, yeah. And, yeah, um, Chet has, is, is like talking about Desert Storm and it's like, wow, that's very, very, uh, that's deeply messed up. And let's see. Um, um, right, yeah, the, the <laughs> Pablo, yeah, this is such a straight guy thing. He's like trying to, to cheer up Kelly, and he actually leaves her really depressed. Like, bad stuff happens to you all the time, and you don't let it get you down. Meanwhile, you know, she hears bad stuff happens, get you down. Okay, I can do that. You know, and just, and he keeps going after, like, we can see from her face and, and hear from her tone of voice, she's clearly not being cheered up. She's being cheered down. And, and he just keeps going. It's, yeah. Again, I I hope I haven't, but I wouldn't rule out that I probably have at some point had that exact, uh, yeah. And let's see, yeah, really cool. Back back with the car, you know, it like it's waiting over the the guy, and and it seems like oh, you know, it, yeah. First it leaps over him again, you know, very. It it does have like the aggression of a bull. And then it's like wait, you know, leaning the wheel over him, and says, "Oh, well, maybe this will be fine." And then the wheel starts, you know, spinning really fast, and like starts, you know, tearing apart like the the skin, the flesh, the skull. Really, really cool. Very nicely done effects. And let's see. Um. What did I write? Okay, I'm gonna move. Oh no, yeah, that was that wheel head. Yeah, um, and then the the yeah, um, Brock and 
Ruby, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, eventually she's done playing nice and, you know, sticks her fingers up his nose and, and just, yeah, and wipes her fingers off on, on ashes, you know, as revenge for him, you know, the most recent thing he's done is make her talk to his father. See, and, and yeah, you know, Brock also, you know, hitting on every woman he encounters, just like Ash. And he's still calling her Bigfoot. Wow. And, you know, he says something like, I want to see Big, Bigfoot's Bigfoot. And let's see. Yeah, and they, they settle it on the mechanical bull. Which, yeah, it's it's quite something seeing them ride that thing. And, yeah, um, Ruby leaves and Kelly's sitting outside drinking by herself. And, you know, yeah, the, they talk a little bit about, you know, the situation. And they end up coming to the conclusion... You know, Kelly says, right, let's go kill your kids. So, there's been some, there was some lesbian subtext between Ruby and Amanda, and I think this is supposed to be also lesbian. You know, certainly there is some, like, they get kind of physically close, looking right into each other's eyes and talking about this personal thing, kind of, you know, whether or not they trust each other and such. And, and yeah, you know, killing one's children, you know, Pat Robertson did famously say that feminism encourages women to leave their husbands, which, you know, Ruby's not with Ball, kill their children, which, you know, they've been doing some of that already, and now they're going to go do more of it, practice witchcraft, check, destroy capitalism, well, welcome to the party, comrade, and become lesbians. I felt fairly confident that that was what he said, but I, I did you know, Google, just to, to make sure to find this entire quote verbatim I got from a site called Brainy Quote, which says that it has been providing inspirational quotes since 2001 to a worldwide community. Yeah, nothing more inspiring than <laughs> nuclear-grade misogyny, but sure. And let's see, the... Uh, then we have the what the hell did I write? Um, right, the, yeah. Then the the you know the possessed um, amp. No, wait. Yes, Amber. I think you know she she shows up and. <laughs> And Ash is, like, you know, falling for her, even though, like, she is the one behind this, just, yeah. And, yeah, I do also quite like his, his plan of, like, you know, the, I think the game is called Never Have I Ever, you know, and, just, yeah, and he goes real specific. And, you know, one of them's like, I mean, I crashed my mom's Jetta. We're not talking about your mom's Jetta! And let's see the oh right right sorry that was before the the mechanical bull anyway yeah but the let's see and and yeah she um she goes into the bathroom with Brock and. The, yeah, Pablo has to give Ash a pep talk to get him to, and, and, yeah, the, you yeah, know, another great fight in the, this time in a bathroom, not the first bathroom fight of the show, and <laughs> the fact that, you know, Brock is, like, thrown against the wall, and he hits his head on the, like, the condom dispenser, so there's a bunch of condoms dripping on, you know, like, because that, that was, you know, that was where his head was at, and now it's where his head is at. 
and the, the yeah ash manages to to cut off the the head whilst also giving her a swirly of the deadite and you know holds it up and says see you know this is this is my day job and then this like teenager walks into the the bathroom and he has no idea it's a deadite he just sees ashy slashy holding a decapitated head you know it's like ah ashy slashy you know runs out he's going to kill us all and then Ash makes it worse by, you know, like, literally, if he just left the head in the bathroom, that would make things so much better. No, he has to ruin things. He walks right in, holding the head, like, guys, does this look like I'm actually going to kill anyone? Oh, fuck, you know, just, let's see, and, and, you know... Finally, Brock stands up for Ash, even though others think he's a serial killer, and say, you know, my son is a hero. And, and you know, I like that he's milking it like, one more time? <laughs> and, and just, yeah, you know, finally he accepts Ash. Which does, of course, mean that, you know, this is, this is an American horror movie. If, if you have, a, you know, like, yeah, the, the one of... Yeah, one of these. You know, if, if there's a big, like, positive emotion moment, it has to be followed up by some intense brutality. And right before the car, you know, hits Brock, which, and, and it is the, the you know, yeah, right, right before that, he, you know, he starts to say, you know, there's some, so, something like, there's something you don't know, you know, but then... The, the possessed Delta runs him over. And yeah, so some IMDb trivia for the episode. This marks the first time since 1999 in a Xena episode that Lucy Lawless, Ted Raimi, and Bruce Campbell have been in the same scene together. They did all work in the on the 2002 Spider-Man movie, but were never in the same scenes together. By appearing in this episode, Ted Raimi continues to be one of the few people, besides Bruce Campbell, to appear in every part of the Evil Dead franchise, even surpassing his older brothers Sam, who produced but did not appear in the video game, and Ivan. Ivan also was not in Army of Darkness nor the video game, who, while crew on the series, have not portrayed a character yet in the TV series, though Ted's role has changed in every appearance, while Bruce has played Ash in every appearance. And, and yeah, um, Lucy sticking her finger up Lee Major's nostrils, is of course a three stooges thing and chet's t-shirt has the word i don't know how to pronounce this but it's it's the yeah it's the name of a poly a kind of polish donuts it says when ruby and kelly are talking outside the bar if you listen closely you can hear a drunk teenager vomiting in the background Despite the trademark of the series having songs strictly from the 70s and 80s in this episode limp biscuits hot dog is heard playing at the party Let's see, and see. right, and yeah, there's a PSA at the end of the episode. I couldn't quite tell if that was supposed to be like a parody, because there are a lot of, you know, I'm not, I don't think it happened so much more today, but there was a while where if you were going to feature something in a movie you also had to do a PSA and yeah that is yeah the... so uh, next episode I do in probably eight days really looking forward to it and yeah Let's see forget the book chasing that thing's only gonna give you a leg cramp